You're welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Well, kick-starting our conversation this morning with the June 12 protests and um, how the security operatives and the government are taking it in the country. We know that uh, it was Democracy Day, June 12th, on Saturday, uh, just two days ago. And all across the country, Nigerians gathered in their numbers in capital cities uh, across Nigeria to protest, you know, saying they want a realization of the ideals of the democracy. And uh, we know that some policemen, some security operatives made arrests. Um, senior advocates of Nigeria, like Femi Falano, are speaking up against that, saying the police need to apologize to protesters and release them. Um, we also heard Tunde Kalawali, a lawyer that we had on Off the Press, saying lawyers are coming together um, to make sure that they prosecute the case, so prosecute all involved, and make sure that all protesters who are arrested uh, are released. Now, to uh, join us speak with it, speak on this matter, we've invited Mr. Shinawa Ibrahim is a risk and policy management expert. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Good morning, viewers. Good morning, everyone. All right. So when we heard about the June 12th and the news of protests in several parts of Nigeria, we know how the police came out to say they didn't hear anything, anything like that, and um, what the police had been saying about this. So we need to find out regarding protests in Nigeria. Is there a limit or a restriction? on the right to protest in this part of the world? Well, anywhere in the world, um, not exception, it's not um, excluding Nigeria, um, there is a UN convention that guarantees the freedom of association, freedom of lawful gathering, and um, freedom to express your view in any capacity. So what the protester protesters has done is lawful, not only lawful, it is their fundamental human rights that is guaranteed by the 1999 constitution as amended. So I think um, they are on the right path. If the police have been issued as arrested anybody, I will advise the Honorable Commissioner of Police, Mr. Kim Odumosu, to immediately, not matter of choice, not matter of um, patronage, you should immediately release those that have been detained unlawfully. Because for me and for us who has been in the trench of civil society, participated in the student union movement, believe that they have conducted themselves in the last term um, lawful protest peacefully. So there's no reason for detaining anybody. Most of the protesters that I personally, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, um, view on national TV and other locations around Lagos were peaceful. You know, everybody can express themselves about what the government is doing that is not right. So I will call on the Nigerian police, the Inspector General of Police, and the Commissioner um, um, of Police in Lagos State to immediately, to immediately, please kindly release them right. so that they can go about their lawful duties. Right, That's my take on We over the weekend also saw um, videos uh, from the protests um, and the reaction of the Nigerian policemen to these protesters. You know, we saw some of them being arrested. Uh, we saw tear gas canisters being fired uh, and, and some of all of that. So I, I want, you know, you to help, you know, try and explain, if possible, the mentality or the mindset of the Nigerian policeman with regards protesting. Are they working with others from above? Or do they just, you know, believe that once there is word of a protest, they should immediate, immediately get out on the streets and arrest everybody who tries or dares to protest and fire tear gas to disperse every protest? What exactly is the mindset like of the Nigerian policeman? You know, in um, policing all over the world, including U.S., Canada, Britain, and the rest of the world, I think... Um, they have what they call public code of conduct that they need to address some civil issues, especially protests, that is guaranteed by not only the constitution of each nation or each state, by, but is guaranteed by the UN Convention. Um, I believe ordinary cops in Nigeria needs to be trained. And if you look at um, their police college, particularly the one in the Kedja, you can't believe that it's a training school. So if you look at the structural view of the building, if you look at the quality of police that have gone through that institution, you find out that they are lacking 
what we call a civil training. They still need to retrain after you join the service. You still need to go back to um, enhance your capacity on human rights, on how to treat protesters, on how to address civil issues. Some police in Nigeria, you find out that they address just ordinary minute or civil issue with live ammunition. Firing tear gas um, because you feel that some people are coming to infiltrate protesters, some people are coming to hijack protesters, that is not lawful. That is not right. You have to do your intelligence around their protest. Your intelligence gathering will give you edge ahead of anything that might that you might foresee that is coming on board. But firing um, canisters, you know, that is harmful too. If you fire the canisters and it hits anybody's eyes or it hits anybody's uh, in the very wrong place, that's another um, civil matter entirely that anybody that turns to be with, that happens to be the, the, um, the, um, the victim can approach the court. So our police in Nigeria needs to uh, enhance their training capacity. They need to do more in terms of addressing civil matters. It's not all civil matters that you come with AK-47, you come with guns. Look at Britain, for instance. You see police in the city of London, Manchester, or Liverpool. They move, you hardly see their pistol. They don't use AK-47. AK-47s are used by the military in a combat you know, arena. You know, so we believe that the Nigerian, ordinary Nigerian police is still lacking the rightful and civil training to address civil issues. So okay. we will call on Nigerian government and um, the president to please kindly look into um, the police service commission who is enshrined by the 1999 constitution to uh, train and retrain and promote the Nigerian police. They need to go back to school, most of them, to enhance their civil and mental you know, uh, uh, mental capacity to handle civil matters. I look at the one in Nojota. It was on call for firing, manhandle protesters. These are not, these are not um, meeting the 21st century policing system, you know. And this has been going for so long. Why we are in school, it happens. You know, when you are protesting and the government feels that what you are doing or, where you, are, or, or you are going to load their image in public space, they tend to use the police as a tool to harass and intimidate the ordinary citizen, you know? So right. I, I believe that Nigerian police needs more training. More training. In fact, intense training. Hmm. They need more right. training. Mr. Very, Ibrahim. very, very, very quickly. Okay, right. We have our correspondent, Destiny Momo, on the field. One of uh, uh, the grounds that was, you know, said, you know, to be uh, for protest this morning, uh, June the 14th, uh, Democracy Day, um, public holiday as well. So we now have Destiny Momo joining us from the Lekki Tollgate to give us live updates on what's happening there. Good morning, Destiny. Good morning, Aneta. All right. So you're at the Lekki Tollgate, is that right? Yes, I'm at the Lekki Tollgate okay. right now. What, what can you see around you? What's happening? Is there a protest going on there? Okay, I got to the venue at 7.15 this morning, and I've been there till now. And because of the public holiday, uh, you can see that scanty cars are lying the road. And so now uh, the policemen here earlier told me that they will not allow any protest to happen here at the toll gate. And so far we've been here, and we are not seeing any sign of intending protesters. All right. Did, did you ask, you know, the policemen why? Is there a why they're not allowing any uh, protest? No, they've not given me any reason why, but the LCC members are officials. Um, they just told us that they are under surveillance. And um, they are saying that um, they do not want anything that happened the last time to happen again. But although they allowed people to protest, or even reporters to report yesterday because it was June 12th, Democracy Day. All right, Destiny. Um, you, you, you've confirmed to us that there's no protest currently going on at the Lekki toll gate and that movement there is sparse. So we'll uh, definitely join you back much later to see if the situation of things at the Lekki toll gate has changed. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Mr. Ibrahim, you're still on the line?
Mr. Ibrahim. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll try to connect with Mr. Ibrahim, but we've seen updates there uh, from the Lekki Togate. We know how um, it was last year, October 20th, 2020, all the, you know, allegations and reports of, you know, debts or no debts still in contention, you know, at the Lekki Togate. So we can understand, you know, you know, have a sense of just why the police might want to be there, you know, heavily armed, guarded, guarding the Lekki Uh But we still have more questions regarding why people are not allowed to protest. If the protest is supposed to be peaceful, you know, we still need to know why. And also we'll be getting uh, more feedback, you know, on the streets of Lagos from our correspondents in other parts of the state as well. Yeah. But the question is about the legality of protest. If we're saying or quoting the UN Charter, the Nigerian Constitution, to say we do have a right to protest, then the question remains, why will police operatives or security men say people should not protest at certain places? Yeah. You, you know, know, that question is paramount. Sure if, um, you know, if I agree with um, Mr. Ibrahim, and I'm go that's what I'm, I'm going to bring okay. up, you know, glad that he's back. Um, Mr. Ibrahim, welcome back. Thank you. Yeah, so I, I want to go back to something that you had mentioned. You know, we just spoke with our correspondent who says uh, she has spoken with some of the policemen at the Lekki Togate, and they are saying that they will not allow any form of protesting uh, happen there. Um, you know, you can draw in the sentiments of, you know, the fact that the Togate was destroyed sometime last year, you know, and some of all of that. But um, I'm going back to some of the things anyway, that you said that, you know, the... the can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. I can hear you. Can you hear us? Ms. Oshinawa, can you hear us? All right. Uh, while we try to reconnect with him, the the challenge you know that I have is you know he him saying that it is a lack of training, um, and that's that's what you know the challenge is. You know, policemen need to be trained better to understand you know the rights of citizens and trained better to understand um, you know their role when there is a protest, and you don't need to go in you know carrying assault weapons. You so know, you think they know all that? that. I think then they then do. why are, I are they, they do, not doing you know, that, that's why what the, they're supposed to do? The initial question that I asked was you know it, what is the mindset of the Nigerian um, policeman? Is it because they they have orders from above to ensure that there is no form of protesting? And when I say above, I'm expecting that whoever it is that is above is properly trained and is well learned. You know, you don't get to the ranks of Commissioner of Police or Inspector General of Police or ASP or DSP or whatever it is without having some form of education that makes you understand what the UN Charter is and what, uh, what the um, Nigerian Constitution says. I think so, another question we need to ask is, you know, if we can all agree that police go through training, because obviously they have training schools, is what type of training, you know, do they get? Because you ask an every Nigerian, on the streets, what, how they feel about police presence, and you don't necessarily get a if a, a feel good response. Yeah. So the question is, what type of training is is you know we spoke to um, PRO police PRO in Imo State, Bala yeah. Elkana, and they talked about the accusatorial method where they accuse you, they don't presume you're innocent, you're accused of the crime, yeah. and then proven innocent later on. So we need to find out what type of training that they so get. Maybe, yeah. Is maybe, it one that maybe. that 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 asks them to put up a, you know, a defensive front, an accusatorial front, or one that, you know, is friendly to the people. If they say police is a friend, do Nigerians feel that the police is friendly towards them? Same so it's the what, school. what type of the training, how are they trained, or the contents, the quality of the training that we need to so really ask So the same way they about. say bail is free, and you know it isn't. Uh, police is your friend, you know, you know police is not your friend. Um, it is also from the foundation of the Nigerian police force, you know, which is where I believe the, the one of the challenges is. It seems like they are, you know, institutions of government that are set up to protect government. They are not set up to uh, defend and to protect the people, you know, which they serve. They are set up to defend government and government's interests and people in government um, or whoever it is that is the highest bidder. And so whenever, you know, they you know, are going about their daily activities, their mindset really is that um, they should do whatever it is to protect government and their tools of the government. And m <clears throat> maybe those are some of the, you know, the challenges that we have with, what, with the training that you're mentioning. Okay. Mr. Well, Ibrahim, welcome back. Can you hear us? Thank you. Um, I'm sorry for the network. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Uh, so, so I was asking, you know, with regards, um, you know, where this training that you because you mentioned that maybe it's a problem of training of the nigerian police um but the nigerian police of course you would know doesn't act out of his own 
um, you know, a mindset. It is from orders from wherever they're coming from, orders from whoever is in charge of that police uh, department or whoever is in charge of the police in that state. So would you say that the Nigerian police itself, right from the top, um, is set up to always go against protesting? I won't say that. And that would not be fair for me to say. But um, I, will, I will refer you back to a case between uh, Mr. Femi Falano representing our president in 20, in 20 um, I don't know, but in 20, I think it's 29, 20, 2009 or something, that arise from the Abuja Federal High Court to the Court of Appeal. And the Court of Appeal affirmed that, one, no protester, if you are a lawful protester, you don't need any permission from the Nigerian police to protest. What they need to do is to give you protection. Two, no police in Nigeria have the right to intimidate, harass any lawful protester. Lawful, I mean. So what I'm trying to say is that the hierarchy of police, it will not be fair for us to say that they give their um, subordinates um, command to intimidate, to dis. Seems we may have lost him again. Mm. But, but some points he's mentioning there, uh, you know, makes me ask. Is Are this... you here? Yes, yes, Mr. Ibrahim, glad to have you back. Please go on. Apologies, we'll try to sub that out in a bit. So, like I was saying, some points he, he raised there that are, you know, key for us to begin to ask questions about. He says the police, you shouldn't get permission or you shouldn't need permission to protest. Also, he mentioned that the police should be giving you protection. But the question is, is that really what we see on ground? Because we've heard cases, we've heard times when the police say, you need to get permission. And some other people say, oh, they actually got permission to protest. So who should you be writing to get permission for? Yeah. Did the Constitution say you need to get permission to protest? Or did the Constitution say it's a freedom? It's a right that you it's have. It's a right. You know, and if, you, if you're quoting the um, family felon uh, uh, case and judgment, um, the courts have said that you don't need to get permission from anybody to protest. Oh, also, um, about the, the, when the protests eventually take place, he mentioned that the police should protect you should be able to provide protection for the protesters. But is that what we see? Or do we see a protesters versus police? Yeah, you know, and it goes, takes me back to what, you know, I was saying initially, that it seems like the Nigerian police as an institution, you know, and the mentality that they have is that they are meant to protect government interests at all times, not protect citizens, not, you know, to serve and defend, of course, uh, you know, the citizens at all times. You know, their role is to protect government interests. And so that's why you should not be seeking their permission to protest, because if the government feels like the protest is going to give them, you know, bad, bad image rep, yes. and, and reputation, then, of course, they're not going to grant you that permission. So the courts have clearly said that you don't need to get any permission to protest. You can go out and protest. But if you're protesting in, in, in a, in a, in a uh, situation where uh, the police themselves feel like they always need to do whatever is possible to protect government interests, then they're always going to be against your protesting. There are videos from the NSAS protest last year where police vehicles were used to carry... Um, allegedly used to carry uh, thugs and carry people who were, of course, going to disrupt the other protests. There's videos, you know, in Lagos, of course, the Lagos government, you know, denounced all of that, you know, where a BRT bus was seen used, to, you know, to carry uh, people who were, you know, on government side, allegedly on government Brandishing side. Brandishing machetes. Exactly. exactly. So um, it's the same thing, you know, if the Nigerian police, look at the way that they come out. If, if you remember the, um, the protest for the, the toll gate, you know, after... Um, the, the court ruling was given at the, as, at the uh, judicial uh, panel. Panel of inquiry. Yes. Um, look at the way that the Nigerian police were, you know, all out in the street, fully armed, because they heard that there was going to be a protest the next day. Why? Why are you carrying tear gas canisters? Why are you here fully armed looking like, you know, you are coming, you know, to fight bandits and killers and kidnappers? There are people who decided that they want to protest. Pretty much the same thing we've seen over the weekend. Why is the Nigerian police driving, you know, so recklessly and running and looking for people to arrest and dragging people like, like, uh, like animals? 
because they want to protest. But, and these are not people who have been violent. You've not seen any evidence of anybody being violent, anyone breaking the law. They are simply exercising their right okay. to protest. Okay, so on the other hand, Usaroge, we also need to understand where the government is coming from, right? I understand that we have a right to protest, but when you look at it from the government perspective, you see that the history of protests in Nigeria seem to have been characterized by violence, whether by opposition protesters, whatever it is, whatever excuse it is. But we've seen cases that protests are not entirely exactly peaceful all the time. Somebody gets shot, somebody, you know, shot the, the whole, the whole I'm, I'm coming, I'm coming. Remember what happened with Shore? The whole he was shot um, by a tear gas canister, or he wasn't shot this and that. So the police could be, or rather, the government stands against protests, could just be to protect lives and property. That's another way to look at it. But that's not the way you do it. So you stand there to protect. Um, uh, protesters. We're going to be uh, linking up with our correspondent in Ojota in a bit. You're present there to protect protesters from whatever reprisals. We see these things in other countries. Why are we acting like we don't? We see how the UK police comes out when there is a protest. There might be two different sides and two different, you know, uh, protesters on, you know, on opposite sides of the street. But you would see that the police is there to ensure that they, you know, maintain law and order. They are not there to immediately start beating everybody up and saying, go home, no protest, but, but regardless then, of who, what side. Another You're question wrong. I need to ask Usaoge, we're talking about celebrating Democracy Day and all the ideals of democracy, the day that was celebrated in Nigeria as, you know, the day 19, you know, 1993, June 12th, that Nigeria experienced her first and first elections. Do, you, do we think that it's on such a holiday that Nigerians should be protesting against the government? Just the question we need to ask. So it's pretty much the same question that we asked during the NSAS protest. Um, not now, do it later. You know, when Jusun also was, was about going on strike, the NBA said, oh, maybe it's not the right time. Is there a specific time that is right? You know, would you say, oh, let's not do it this week, let's do it next week, you know, or let's do it in May? There's no specific time. If the people, the, the people, you know, feel aggrieved, feel angered, feel unfair, unfairly treated, feel like they need to express themselves at any point in time, they have the right. And that's what the Constitution says, that's what the UN Charter says. They have the right to express themselves at that moment. Um, let's connect with um, you know, our correspondent in Ojota this morning, Jacinta Obiku. Good morning. Can you hear us? Okay, we'll try to get to, with Jacinta in just a bit. But the, you know, the videos you're seeing you on your screen is Ojota this morning yes. and uh, basically shows, you know, relatively peaceful environment. You can see um, Lagos State workers there sweeping the roads. It, it doesn't look violent. You know, people just going about their daily uh, business. Uh, of course, traffic is not as much as it's used to because it's a public holiday. Lots of people are resting at home. We can see police van packs there on the roads, uh, police officers sitting down. Nobody's pacing. Nobody's carrying any guns. So it seems, you know, just as it is as in the... As peaceful as it can be. You know, yes. Just as we saw in the Lekki Togit area, it is a peaceful environment here at the Gani Farami Park in Ojota. Uh, a total, total, um, uh, you know, departure from what we saw over the weekend on Saturday, where we saw people on the roads protesting, tear gas canisters here and there. We even had gunshots. Okay, I can see. Let me oh, yeah. All right. So, yes, we'll try to reconnect with Jacinta there. But as we can see so far, in the place that seemed like hotspots over the weekend, Ojota, for one, seems relatively peaceful. Uh, yeah. today, this morning. Uh, there, there's something that we've repeatedly, you know, said here on this platform with people that we've interviewed, security experts, and that is the importance of intelligence um, with regard to security. We cannot, you, you, know, um, you know, carry out security, um, um, you know, work and we cannot, you know, continue to act like we, we you can only use force. Force cannot be the only approach with regard to security. There has to be intelligence. And so the Nigerian police needs to be able to develop itself to a place where they know when there will be a protest and when there will not be a protest. Protests don't just spring up. Nobody... People plan these things. Exactly. Yes. You would see and they would plan these things. Yes, there are those ones that may just happen out of nowhere. But let's not throw away the importance of intelligence. If, if the police is feeling that there's going to be a counter-protest and might go and turn violent, they should be intelligent enough to know where these counter-protests are coming from or who might be sponsoring the violence. Uh, good morning. Uh, welcome back, Mr. Ibrahim. Can you hear us? 
All right, so we've tried to, of course, you know, do our own quick analysis on some, on some of all these uh, uh, issues. Uh, go ahead. Um, I was asking earlier about where, you know, this mindset seems to be coming from. And I suggested earlier that it might be because the Nigerian police seems to be um, or seems to believe that it is set up to protect government interests and anything that is or seems to be against government interests needs to be crushed. Um, is that also, you know, likely where these challenges are coming from? You know, um, I, I would like us to balance the, the, the thoughts about um, government Muslim protesters. If you look at the Arab Spring, you know, it started like just a protest for some, or some unwelcoming policy of government. But it turned out that most of the protesters in the Arab Spring were hijacked, were hijacked, and, you know, giving up leading to the, you know, uprising and, you know, overtaking of governments. So what happened in Nigeria, in Lekitoge as well, turned out to be one of the worst and very heaviest protests in the history of this country. They almost, you know, submerged the lawful authority in the land. Investment that was cut, that was destroyed on this train was almost about nine billion naira for Lagos State alone. Not to talk about other states of the federation. So the police naturally will be on a red alert if such a protest is coming. Not necessarily mean that the government will tell them what to do, but they will naturally have the right, lawful right to protect the, you know, the civil authority and protect the public property as well. So I believe these are, you know, a uh, combination of two, you know, um, um, approach that the police are using. However, the police still have the right to protect public property. If you are protesting and another person is not protesting, that person has the right for free movement. He has the right to go to or uh, do his business or our business. You know, most of the protesters who are sponsors by you know some state actors who hijack the public space perpetrate so a lot of you know um, um, um destructive tendency or heart and at the end of the day the police will take the blame so i see the reason why police is being you know unnecessarily agitated but i will advise most of the protesters you can display and protest in a lawful manner. You don't have to destroy against the civil authority. For instance, I watch as just an actor. I can say that anytime, any day. It's just an actor. You know, if police are saying that, please and please lawfully approaching you to leave a space, that place has been, you know, cordoned. You don't have to go there and rest on the fence where police is instructing or telling you that this place is not safe. Can okay. All right, Mr. Ibrahim, if you could kindly hold on. We have our correspondents on the line. She's joining us from Ojota. Uh, good morning, Jacinta Obioku. Jacinta, can you hear me? All right. Um... Uh, sadly, vehicle, can you, can uh, sadly we, we lost her. We would get her back on the line. We apologize for that. But really, this is a conversation that must be had because June 12th is a very symbolic day. These are issues we need to address now because, you know, look at the future. Next year, what, what would the June 12th day be like? What would democracy day be like? Is this what we're going to see every, every year now? Is this going to be an annual thing? So we need to really address these issues. I feel the government needs to actually address these issues so that it can be laid to rest and put to bed once and for all so that we don't have a day set aside in the country that becomes a day of protest, you know. So, um, Jacinta, do we have you now? Yes. Yes, good morning. Thank you for joining us. So um, let good us morning. know what the situation is like where you are in Ojota. Okay, so we've been here, we've been here since 7, and until um, no protest is going on yet. But we can see the presence of the Nigeria uh, police. We are here confirming how uh, peaceful here is for now. It's just the atmosphere, the usual atmosphere of um, public holidays. Um, that's what we are seeing here for now. 
All right. Have you been able to speak with any of the policemen on ground there? Yes, we spoke to them to um, know whether there will be a protest for for uh, they didn't um, say anything specific. They, they just said um, it's peaceful here. Yeah, nothing is going on. To just let it be known that nothing is going on. No, um, uh, uh, just uh, normal, normal atmosphere for every holiday. Okay. All right. Um, good to you know see how peaceful uh, Ojota is this morning. And th uh, thanks for, of course, uh, sharing with us. Would we'll connect with you, of course, uh, sometime again during the day and see if things change. Thanks uh, very much, Jacinta. Thank you. Okay. All okay. Right. So I think it's great to know that um, Lagos seems pretty calm today. We hope um, it's it's the same way in other parts of the country, in other states, because we saw what happened in Abuja. The tear gas canisters that were fired. You know, it's just terrible. You know, these protesters calling out the government for bad governance and all of that. You know, but. Uh, Lot, lots of lots of injuries, lots of arrests. You know, activists just demonstrating against you know the current administration. Well, good to see that today is relatively peaceful and calm, and we hope it stays the same way. You know, we wouldn't want any more casualties. You know, on the side of of Nigerians. Yeah, uh, well, well, that means that both sides need to understand the roles that they should play. You know, both the protesters and the um, um, the police and the mm -hmm. law enforcement agencies. Um, yes, I, I need to ask you, Mr. Ibrahim, um, thanks for still being here with us. If we're talking about protest, the right to protest, to say this is constitutionally guaranteed, we're quoting the UN Charter, but when we come to Nigeria and, you know, the practicability of this protest in Nigeria, it seems, you know, very different. So, looking at the Nigerian setting, is there any acceptable form of protest in this country? <laughs> You know, the mood of the country, the policy of the government determines, you know, the form and shape of the protest. You know, you can see different or four groups protesting, uh, uh, requesting for different, you know, public policy that needs to be changed. Some can say the foreign currency, the dollar is very high. Some can say the fuel is very expensive. Some can say, okay, we need more, we need more infrastructure. Some can say, okay, police brutality, you know, you can't actually determine the mood and shape of the protest. It depends on the, you know, citizen policy of the government shape out different form of government, um, different form of um, um, protest. If you look at in Nondo State um, on Saturday, some people are demanding for, you know, agricultural support, uh, food, items in food and the rest of them. In Abuja, some are saying Buhari must go. I don't know why they are saying the reason why they want Buhari to go. If you want the, somebody to go, you must have a reason why you want the person to go. In Lagos, some are saying, you know, different agenda, different, you know. So that's why I said it depends on the mood of the of the protester. So you can't actually tone it down to one particular view because, of course, you will have, you know, you know things that you are agitating for. I will have my own. But, of course, there has to be a central correlation, you know. A few weeks ago, uh, my good Egbo, uh, um, Mr. Femi Falano, was at the Lagos House of Assembly, you know, presenting official letter, demanding for some certain level of, you know, um, uh, request from the government. And like what the Commissioner of Police, Mr. Akim Odumosu, did say, said, he said, uh, Mr. Femi didn't take approval. He notified him. He notify him and he has done the right thing. He provide them, um, you know, security for him to move from Ikeja to Lagos State House of Assembly, which I believe um, 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 that's the right thing to do. Like I did say, um, like I did uh, mention, it's not necessarily mean that you have to go to police and seek approval and write application. You can notify them just on a phone call and what they need to do guaranteed by the constitution is for them to ask you for time and location so they can provide the necessary um, um security measure or, or, or secure require security and details to to protect the the protesters so i think this is necessary for us so you can't actually determine what the mood of the protest will be in your state there might be another thing they are demanding for in kb state it might okay. be another thing in kano there might, might be another thing 
So who determines how the protests will look like? Okay. But so I believe the well coordinated protests so far in in twenty in this new millennium is the lucky target. Okay. I think it's well is well is well protected and is well uh, arranged. Okay. So just like you said, the protest is not coordinated because different states, different groups demanding different things. So what then can the June 12th protest achieve since there's really no focus among the different groups in different states? Or is, is, it, is it just all in vain? You know, if you look at, let's say 15 years ago, 20 years ago, you will notice that there is the, the form uh, June 12th correlation led yes. by the late chief Antonia Enaro, um, Dr. Bear Kora Sokuti, I comrade Ayo, who happens to be a friend and a brother, also was a secretary, Ayo Adewale. If you look at uh, Pronaco, other civil society group who believes in June 12. Now, let me tell you something. So far, Okay, um, we apologize for that network glitch there again. Hopefully we can get Mr. Ibrahim to finish up his thoughts on that one uh, before we delve into our next conversation. I'm still talking about governance, you know, yeah. this time around about federalism. But really, um, you know, like, like we're saying, it's a constitutional right to protest. It's just how it's done and uh, the response of the government and security operatives that makes the difference, isn't yeah, it? You know, and, um, you know there, there needs to be also so, you know, some level of clarity uh, you know, with regards notifying the police and seeking permission to protest. Um, like I said before, you know, the Nigerian police seems to believe that it is there strictly to protect government interest. And so regardless of how you send the message, if you send it with hot smileys or you send it with, um, you know, with the, the angry smiley, um, if they feel, you know, like they, you know, that, that uh, your protest is not going to be in government's interest or might be in government bad light, then you may not be granted that permission to protest. I don't know um, what the clarity needs to be on. Where, you know, do I notify the police or do I, um, you know, ask for permission to protest? And what that notification simply um, means, I believe, is sending a message across to say that there would be protesters at this time. Um, regardless of whether the police is giving you permission or not, I believe that's what it means. Um, but there's so much, you know, that also needs to be understood. Um, he's made mention of uh, civil society groups uh, that had, of course, uh, uh, a champion the June 12th protest many, many years ago, 15, 20 years ago, um, in the 90s and even further down. I don't think that in today's Nigeria there is um, these protests, you know, that we're seeing are being led by civil society organizations or civil society groups. Um, the NSARS wasn't uh, led by any civil society. Oh, the civil here, society so, groups in Oshun um, State actually led protests. Even though we know that most of this is by individuals, right? Oh, well, I'm, I'm talking generally on June 12th protests today. Yeah, yes, it's not, June been, it's not been led by... The ones that happened here in Lagos weren't led by any CSOs. The ones that happened during the NSARS protests weren't led by any CSOs. You know, led by Nigerians and, you know, young people who felt like they needed... They had a point to, to make. Mm -hmm. um, Oshinawa Ibrahim, I think we would have to uh, wrap up here. Thank you very much. Uh, we apologize for the uh, poor network uh, that we had this morning, but thanks for joining us and for sharing your views with Thank us. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right. You know, and of course, it's um, just to once again remind, you know, that the, the conversation concerning policing and protesting uh, should never, you know, should always, you know, be an opportunity to remind the police that intelligence is very, very important with regards protesting. Whether you get that message or that notification about a protest or not, it's still the, you know, the responsibility of the police to know, at least to a large extent, where protest is coming from, if there's going to be a counter-protest, and know what roles that they should play you know, on both sides. Yes, other people have the right to freedom and have the right to say, okay, we don't agree with this protest and we'll stand on this other side. They have that right also. But the police should be able to um, know what both sides are saying, know where both sides are coming from, know who is behind both sides, and be able to maintain law and order. That's their responsibility. Yes. They're not meant to simply say no protesting whatsoever because there's going to be violence, no pro protesting whatsoever because remember what happened, you know, last year, you know, October, and the way of saying no protesting whatsoever is to fire tear gas at anybody that they see and pick up anybody and slap left and right and pull people into um, um, Black Marias and all of that. It's a terrible thing that we're seeing. Um, and it should not be that way. We'll go on a short break. When we come back, um, the conversation on true federalism and what federalism truly means um, and the federalism that we uh, Nigerians are asking for is what we're getting into next. Stay with us here on The Breakfast. Shh.